10.05, welcome back to the Chad HD Show on News Talk 95.1 FM and 790 AM. KFYO, joining us on the phones right now, representing District 68 in the great state of Texas. State Representative, our friend Drew Springer on the show with us right now. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm doing great. I mean, I love that introduction. I love fun. There you we go. Need to have See, more fun. <laughs> you're just you're always having fun. It seems. I, I mean, on 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 Twitter, you're just you're you just seem to be having a good time uh, with with everything that you're doing. Uh, you know, you, you got to smile. You got to laugh. You got to enjoy the good things in life. We are blessed to be in America, and we are really blessed to be in Texas. Absolutely. Uh, Well, tell us what you're doing right now. Uh, You and uh, you're you're doing some town halls, it looks like, across the district. I am. I did uh, 700 miles on Monday, sort of up towards Panhandle to Memphis and Wheeler and and, uh, Wellington. And, uh, you know, today, Charles Perry and I just uh, had our first town hall in Paducah, and I'm on my way over to Matador with him. And and then we'll be in Floyd 8 after that. Uh, this afternoon, we're going to join uh, Jody Arrington's uh, conference there and talk about things coming up in the 86th legislature. And tonight, we'll be with Governor Abbott about 5:30, I think. So you're going to be uh, you're going to be busy. You're going to be putting a lot of miles on the uh, on the vehicle. I am, I am, and then I get to finish the evening with uh, uh, seeing my son and his new bride, and uh, have dinner with them in Lubbock. They're Lubbock residents, so. Uh, they're part of Red Raider Nation now. That's great. That's great. Well, what are some of the things that uh, in these town halls, what are some of the issues that, that people are bringing up uh, to, to you and Senator Perry and, and, and wanting to wanting to get more information on? You know, probably the number, the number one issue really is property taxes. And what are we going to do to actually get property tax relief? And so we're talking about that. We're talking about uh, the ideas that you know, I'm going to bring forward on moving more to a consumption base to to reduce or eliminate the maintenance and operation, the M&O tax, uh, which is about 40 to 50 percent of most people's uh, tax bill. Um, and, and that's probably one of the top drivers. Hey, school security uh, is definitely one of them. Um, and then from my perspective in my district, it's, hey, we know that there's these big schools facing different challenges than we face in our small Don't make a one-size-fits-all. Allow us to do our school defender programs where we have armed teachers and we do these things like uh, so many of my uh, school districts have done um, and work on that. And then school finance is always the topic of, uh, you know, how are we going to work through that? And and, uh, uh, I find, though, that about half the people who want to fix school finance really just want to lower school property tax rate. That's what they mean by school finance. Yeah. Uh, when when people talk to you about school security, and, and I know nobody, and I don't think anybody wants a one size fits all. We're too big of a state in order for that to happen. But what is, you know, what are like one or two of the best ideas for school security? Because it seems like, you know, for a Lubbock IST, school security means adding cameras and buzz in systems. Whereas for other school districts, it is having school marshals and, and administrators who can carry. That's exactly right. And, you know, one of the things that came up in the roundtables the governor had is our superintendent, Anna Rawls, went down and talked about the tweet system that uh, Texas Tech developed, where they really had about, and what it does is it teaches teachers how to identify kids that could be potentials. And that, I think, the 10 school districts they were doing, they had about 40,000 times that they took it to ask the additional questions. And then it went further and further to the point where, some kids had to be seen through telepsychology with a psychiatrist to figure out whether they had real problems. And it got down to 25 kids out of those 40,000 encounters actually had to be removed from the school because they were potential dangers to themselves and others. Yeah, those are the kind of systems that address the things before they happen. And then, you know, but you also touched on that school defender, school marshal program. Each school has to pick which one's right for them, in my opinion. Um, I've got well over two dozen school districts now that have armed teachers, administrators, custodians, coaches, and the benefit of that is nobody knows who they are, mm-hmm. uh, and it's no longer a gun-free zone, and, and, and we hope it never has to be enacted, but uh, I think that, that those two things, identifying them before 
and then having it to where it's not a gun-free zone to where people know that nobody will stop them are the two main things. Visiting with State Representative Drew Springer here on the uh, on the Chad Hasty Show. Uh, yesterday, the governor, and I'm sure you saw this, the governor said that uh, he wants to have a structure uh, that would have a compensation plan that would, and I'm putting, here's what, here's what his quote was, a compensation plan that would set the very best educators on a pathway to earning a six-figure salary. And that was from the governor yesterday. How do you do that? And then how do you determine who the best teachers are? You know, that, you know, that's building on what Commissioner Morath at the TEA uh, did when he was on the school board at uh, Dallas ISD. Um, and it's merit-based. Um, you have to look at it. Um, you know, you've got to be fair. Uh, it can't be. Oh, are you still with us? See, this is what happens when you're driving around. Let's see if, uh, if he calls back in. So he got zapped. Driving in between uh, two different cities there, Jody. Let's see if he gives us a call back. Take a break. When we come back, if uh, if he has if he can join us again, if he's not in a bad cell area, we'll visit with State Representative Drew Springer. Looks like we have uh, Representative uh, Drew Springer back on the show with us. He's got another town hall coming up at uh, 1030, so we don't have a lot of time, and, and they're they're driving on their way to Matador, might be closing in on Matador right now. Uh, Representative Springer, thanks for giving us a call back. No problem, man. I, I, was, I added a cell phone booster to my car, and I was going to see how well it worked, but, you know, anybody who's driven between Paducah and Matador knows that cell coverage could be a little bit spotty. That's right. <laughs> yeah, the the map gets a, little, gets a little hazy right there on the cell phone coverage yeah. area. Absolutely. Hey, I, I do. I do have to ask you. You know, obviously, you you, you care a lot about Texas Tech, Lubbock. Uh, obviously, what's been in the news lately with Chancellor Duncan uh, leaving Texas Tech University and leaving uh, the chancellorship. What, what have been your overall thoughts on on the on the controversy? And, and obviously, this is probably something that's going to be at least whispered about uh, tonight at the fundraiser because uh, of what has been. Uh, just, just discussed about who has had influence over who uh, on the Texas Tech Board of Regents. Yeah, and I, you know, I was disappointed when I heard uh, on Monday about uh, uh, Chancellor Duncan. You know, I, I served with him when he was Senator Duncan, and we shared the same county. And uh, I considered him a good friend and a, and a great human being. And, and, and that's what I think everybody realizes is, you know, uh, the, the kind of person he was and, and uh, to really be, you know, pushed in that direction uh, was disappointing. Uh, I think if anything comes out of it, I think that it highlights the vet school and we're hearing conversations more and more now of saying the regent saying, hey, no, we're for the vet school, so that means we need to uh, drive forward and, uh, um, and, and now make sure that that thing happens. Do do you have full faith that that's what's going to happen, or or is is it up to lawmakers like yourself and those who have pride in West Texas and in Texas Tech to to really drive that home in the next in the upcoming legislative session, and especially when Texas Tech doesn't have a chancellor right now with the relationships that Duncan did have? No, and you know, uh, Chancellor Duncan got the ball started, and. and, and you know, I think that Charles Perry, when he put that in the budget, when uh, Duncan, uh, when Dustin Burroughs and John Phil and myself and all those made sure that it stayed in in the House, that we pushed that thing through, I think that we are going to continue to see that championed onward. Uh, you know, will it will it be smooth sailing from here? Probably not. There's, there obviously was behind-the-scenes things that were trying to stop that. And we just need to flush those out and have the, all the debate out in the open again uh, and continue to make sure it's the, the right thing to do. Before I let you go, and I know you have another uh, town hall coming up here in just a uh, about 10 minutes or so, uh, so I want to get this question in, and I'll probably ask you this about a, a few dozen times before the upcoming legislative session starts. Uh, but but uh, you know, what would you like to see in the next House speaker? And uh, any thoughts on uh, uh, Representative Clardy's announcement this week that he would be uh, in the race for speaker? Sure. Uh, Travis was the fourth one who jumps in. But what I want to see in a speaker is somebody who lets the membership work and bills and ideas flow through members, not through lobbyists and consultants and staffers. 
Uh, and if you vote your district, you're not punished um, for doing that. And I, I think when I talk to the 70 plus members I've talked to, that's what we're all looking for. We want to be able to represent our district and come back home and know that if we didn't do that, our, our voters will punish us. Not that somebody else will by saying, you don't get to file bills, you don't get to be on good committees, you don't get to do these type of things. Um, you know, nobody has gotten traction yet. Uh, the, the process this time seems to be more along the lines that groups are sharing their ideas of what they're looking for, and then they're going to probably end up sharing names that, who do we think best fits that? It'll probably be done that way more than it will be uh, from a one-on-one of going out and, and getting pledge cards. Right. State Representative uh, Drew Springer, representing District 68. As always, we appreciate you uh, giving us a call. I know you've got the, another uh, town hall going today, and uh, people can always follow you on Twitter at uh, at uh, 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 at Drew Springer, and uh, of course uh, they can uh, follow where you're going to be every step of the way there. Absolutely. So if uh, if you're not already in Matador, you can at least get the flow date about 12 o'clock. And there you go. There. And then uh, 2.30 will be uh, on the, I believe it's on the Tech campus uh, with that Jody Arrington's event and uh, talking about the 86 legislature and probably talk a little bit more about the speaker's race there. Yeah, probably so. Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate your time. Have a great day. That's uh, Drew Springer. Always good to hear from uh, State Representative uh, Drew Springer here on the Chad Hasty Show. And it sounds like he's committed to the uh, vet school. And uh, just like the rest of the West Texas delegation, they, they, they want to see this thing through, which is a, a very good thing.